Now, let's try to look at the first part of our chapter 4 here, where we learned the five different types of forces that we can observe in a macroscopic situation. Okay, so the first force that we will learn is weight. Weight, uh, you can often see in a situation like this. So what is weight? Weight is the gravitational force that is exerted on an object. Okay, so the object, if it's being exerted with a gravitational force, then the gravitational force experienced by the object will be called the weight. Okay, so let's study the, the characteristics of weight. So we say the object experienced a gravitational force, then we call the gravitational force as weight, right? So who or what exerts the gravitational force on the object? Okay, so since I say uh, it's a gravity, so gravity, it's always related to your Earth, right, uh, in our SPM. And yes, in this case, your weight here is exerted by Earth, okay? Because you are standing near Earth, therefore the Earth uh, exerts a gravitational force trying to pull you down towards the ground, okay? It's an attraction attracting you towards the ground, okay? So how do you determine the magnitude? of the weight being exerted on this object over here okay the weight can be quantified using this thing this equation over here w is uh, representing weight but here it does not have an arrow sign so over here what this means is is the magnitude of the uh, weight magnitude of weight so magnitude of weight should always be positive because it's a magnitude of a factor it equals to mg so this is mass, this is G, G is acceleration due to gravity, 9.81. There's no negative, huh? G is always a positive value, 9.81. Acceleration in the y direction, Ay is equals to negative G. Then there is where you get your negative 9.81. G is only 9.81. Okay, W equals to mg, this is how you determine the magnitude. So what can we know here? If our mass, if we have mass, then we are near Earth, then we will experience weight. Okay, we will have a weight if we are having a mass and we are standing near Earth. If you have zero mass, then you have zero weight. Because you have no mass, the Earth won't attract you. If you have no mass, the Earth won't attract you. Okay, then G means by what? You have to be standing near the Earth, only you are able to experience this uh, gravi gravitational acceleration of 9.81. If you are not near Earth, if you are near Mars, then you have another value. If you are near the Saturn, then you have another value. But for our case, it's always on Earth. Okay? For direction, the direction of uh, weight should be always pointing towards the center of the Earth. Okay? But if you can imagine this is the ground, then if you draw a big, big circle, then you should imagine the center of the Earth should be right below the object, right? Okay? If you are having a circle, any object right below it should be pointing towards the center of the earth. If your object is placed around here, then below your object will be right to the center of the earth. Okay, so as long as object is near earth, it's usually pointing downwards. Okay, the weight is always pulling that pointing downwards because that is where that is how your earth is pulling you. Your earth is pulling you downwards, your earth is never pushing you upwards. Therefore, your which is always going downwards as long as you are near the surface of Earth. Okay, next we have our tension. Tension is a case, is the force that, is, that occurs when we are using ropes or cables or string to pull something. So in this case here, you can see that I am using a rope to pull this block over here. So the rope is exerting a force, which we call it as tension on the block. Okay, and this force, we usually label it by T with an arrow. So this is tension. Okay, so let's study its characteristics. So tension here is exerted by what? Well, the medium or the, or the you can say it is exerted by the rope actually. Okay, even though there's someone pulling the rope, but the, 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 the object that is directly exerting the force is the rope. Okay, you can think of the rope as a medium, but in the end, it's still the rope touching the block. So it is still exerted by the rope, okay? So it's exerted by the rope on the object of interest. It's always important when we talk about force, we need to know it's exerted by what on what, because this will be very important when we study Newton's third law later. So for weight, it's by the earth on the object of interest, which is our block over here. 
for tension is exerted by the rope on the object of interest, which is our block over here. Okay, so this is uh, the exerted by what? For magnitude, well, T is usually given uh, in a problem or in a situation where well, you solve problem, T is usually given. If it's not given, right, then you have to determine the magnitude for T using Newton's law. So either first law or second law, or sometimes even third law, uh, depending on what's the situation being given. We will analyze that using a few example problems in future videos. Okay, for direction of tension, this one is uh, very certain, okay? If we look at tension, we straight away think the direction of tension should be along the rope, away from the object. So along the rope means by if you draw the arrow, it must be drawing on the rope. But whether it's pointing away from the object or pointing towards the object, it's always away from the object. Because you pull, you can never push using rope. You always pull using rope. So you are always pulling away. Okay, so you pull. So the direction of force should always be away from the object. So along the rope, away from the object, is the keyword for the direction for tension. Okay, next we have external force. External force is a situation where uh, you can't really classify the force being gravity. You can't classify the force as being tension. You can't classify it as normal, you, normal forces. You can't classify it as frictional forces. Then you classify it as external forces. But basically, it's the force which is more explicitly shown in the situation like this case you explicitly see the human here is pushing the box or the block over here so this uh, force is exerted by the human over here you can't classify it as weight you can't classify it as tension you can't classify it as normal you can't classify it as friction so you classify it as external forces forces exerted by something external to the object you can think of it like that okay so exerted by what well by something else uh, it can be a hand, it can be a piston, it can be a magnet, it can be a stick, it can be a fan. Yeah, as long as it's not earth, it's not rope, it's not rough surface, it's not surface. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll look at the other forces later when we talk about surfaces. Okay, then the magnitude. Well, the magnitude for external force is usually given because if it's, if it's a human pushing it, then usually they'll tell you the human push with how much strength. So that would be the magnitude. But if it's not given, again, you need to determine it using your Newton's law of motion. Uh, use sometimes first law, sometimes second law, occasionally third law, depending on the situation, and we'll study that in the future videos. For direction of external force, well, it's usually explicitly stated in the situation. In this case, if you can see the human here is pushing horizontally, then you expect the force should be pushing this way. Okay, so it's usually more straightforward to determine the direction of external force. Okay. Next, we have normal force. Normal force is a situation where the object is touching another surface or another object. Okay, if it's let's say in this case your block here is touching, uh, let's say a floor. Okay, so if it's touching something because there is contact, then straight away you have normal force. If you have any contact with something, then you have normal force. In this case, this block here is in contact with the floor. Therefore, it will be exerted with a normal force. It experiences a normal force because it is in contact with something. Okay, so let's study its characteristics. This normal force here is exerted by what? It's exerted by the surface that are in contact with the object of interest. So in this case, if this is the floor, then this normal force here is exerted by the floor on the block. Okay. Uh, Let's say if this is a table, then this is then this normal force here is exerted by the table on the block. Okay, the by and the on is always important. Huh? In this case, it's by the human on the box. In this case, it's by the floor on the block. As long as the block is in contact with something, in contact with the wall, in contact with the floor, in contact with another block, as long as it's in contact with something, then you experience normal force. Okay, the magnitude. Uh, this one magnitude is not usually given, but the magnitude can always be determined using Newton's law of motion. We'll discuss that further using first law, second law, and third law in future videos. So for the direction of normal force, well, the word normal here is related to the normal that you learn in your maths class. You learn about normal and tangent, right? So normal here means perpendicular, actually. So as you can see, normal force is always in the direction that is perpendicular to the surface 
okay perpendicular to the surface and you should always think of the word push okay the floor here is actually pushing the block upwards if this is your floor if this is a block and this is your floor and you put your block on here right so if we don't have this floor the block will go downwards right if we don't have this floor you continue to fall but because we have this floor therefore we prevent this block from continuing to fall downwards so if you want to prevent something from continuously go downwards then you should expect this floor here should push the block to hold it from going downwards right so in, in that case we know that this force should be pointing in this direction okay so it's always perpendicular then always try to think of the idea of pushing where should you push in order to push the object okay this one uh it's a bit more abstract we will do it using a few examples to get uh, familiar with the idea of uh what do you mean by push when we talk about normal force okay so it's perpendicular to the surface in contact okay next the last one here we have friction friction is a small f friction uh i believe you have heard of this word a lot in your spm but in our syllabus we usually uh, we will split into two different types of friction which is static friction and kinetic friction static friction usually comes with a subscript s and kinetic friction usually comes with a subscript k the difference between static friction and kinetic friction is that static friction the object it is not sliding okay in this case you can see the block is in contact with the ground right but the block is not sliding across the ground if there's no sliding across the surface if there's no sliding then it's a static friction okay in this case you can see the block is sliding across the ground because i'm writing displacement over here so this block is actually moving to the right so in this case it is sliding across the ground so if there's a sliding motion across the surface then this is a kinetic situation so this is kinetic friction okay the word is slight huh? the word is not move I always emphasize slight. Why do I emphasize slight? I will discuss it in the later videos where we specific on friction. Okay, so let's study its characteristics. Friction is exerted by what? Well, it's exerted by the rough surface. The rough surface is preventing you from moving that way uh, smoothly. So, of course, it's a rough surface that exerts the force on you. Okay, so the by is by the rough surface on the object of interest. Okay. The magnitude for static friction for static friction we have to determine the magnitude for static friction using newton's law it's usually the first law cases but occasionally it can be second law okay occasionally but usually it's first law cases but we did deal with that in the future videos okay for kinetic friction it's always a fixed formula it's always a uh, kinetic friction equals to mu k mu this is greek letter mu k and mu k here represents coefficient of kinetic friction okay so fk is equals to mu k n n here is normal force which you learn as the fourth force that you learn just now so it's a fixed formula to determine the magnitude for kinetic friction but it's there's no fixed formula for static friction okay the direction of friction if it's a static friction it will be opposite the direction where the object tend to slide if the surface is not rough if you imagine the same situation but now the surface is not rough if the person is pulling to this direction then the object should be moving to the right right so opposite the direction where the object tends to slide so if the object tend to slide to the right then opposite will be left so the static friction should be pointing to the left okay so if you are facing a situation where there's a static friction imagine the, the surface is not rough then where will the object slide then the direction of object slide you flip to the opposite and that will be the direction of static friction okay for kinetic friction it's opposite the direction where the object slides if the object is sliding to the right then it the kinetic friction is to the left it's opposite the direction where it slides so these are the five different kinds of forces that you may observe in macroscopic situation in the next video, we will try to study how to illustrate these forces using free body diagram to study all the forces that are acting on a specific object.